Hi, this is Janet with Try It Like It Created, and today we're going to be making an alcohol ink Christmas ornament. And so what I have in front of me is um, a plastic ornament, and it's kind of an ovally shape. You can do this with a round ornament, you can do it with a glass, you can do it with plastic. Um, but you just want one that is uh, contained. You don't want one that uh, hinges open. Okay, so we have that. Then I have my alcohol ink colors that I've chosen here, and the brand I'm using is T-Rex uh, Alcohol Inks. It doesn't really matter what brand you use, but I have Teal, Dragon Fruit Pink, and Irish Moss. We'll see how those work together. And then I have a Silver Additive from Adirondack. I have a cup to hold my ornament while it's drying when we're finished. I have a, an air blower. Uh, I got this on Amazon in, I believe it was in the photo department, but I can put a link to that. I have some inexpensive white craft paint, and then I also have um, some acrylic pouring medium in iridescent in case my paint isn't runny enough for the finish. So what we want to do to start is to open up our ornament set that aside because you don't need that till later and then I just um, kind of blow in there and make sure everything is clean now it doesn't matter if the outside of your ornament is dirty which mine is um, we'll take care of that later so then we're going to start with our alcohol ink colors and you just want to be careful and just add a drop and let it run okay if you need to add a bit more to let it run, you can do so. It's going to be somewhat of a slow process. You want to, you know, let it let it do its thing. You can do stripes. You can um, let it run sideways like I am. I'm going for a more abstract kind of look. And I'm just going to let that ink run around in there. If you want to, prior to putting your ink in, you could put some rubbing alcohol in there to clean out the inside. And then, um, of course, you're going to want that to dry before you move on. Now, your alcohol inks are going to move every time you add a new color. But they'll move less if you dry them, and that's where the blower comes in. So if I just reach in here and kind of work to dry that ink before I move on to my next color. Okay, and so now let's see what happens if we add the green in here. I already like some of what I'm seeing here. I don't know, it's, yeah, you can see it. The speckledness here, I don't know if that's dirt inside what ornament or if that's just the action of the alcohol ink, but I like it, so I'm happy with it. So I'm just going to slowly add more color and let it run. Now, if you want yours to do striping, of course, you can let it, you know, run straight down. I'm going at different angles so you can see here that the color is moving in different directions. And once again, I'm going to dry that. You can see some of the ink is still moving and some of it is starting to blend here. Now I want to be careful with the pink because I know pink and green are pretty far from each other on the color wheel and that may make some mud uh, happen but with the blue it's going to make a purple color so let me just add some more air in here and that green seems pretty subtle out here and it's got some yellow to it so um, we might be okay with adding the dragon fruit red but let's just see what happens we can always change it So now as I add the 
pink and I am getting some purple effect, but I'm also getting it in larger, kind of a larger quantity instead of the little running pieces here. So we'll just move it around. Let's see what happens here. I might add some more blue in over here, but once again, I'm gonna have to let some of this dry. And you can see where the colors are getting thicker. Um, they're gonna continue to move. You can see here they're moving. Um, so you may just wanna give it some time, you know, to let that happen. And then, if, of course, if you leave it in one place too long, you're going to get some pooling of the ink. And that could be interesting as well. All right, so I wanted to add some blue into the pink area. I'm trying to decide where. I kind of like what's happening right here with the striping. So I'm not quite sure where I want to put that blue. <laughs> Let's see if I can just, just drop it straight down to the bottom and then let it come back up. So I like the color blending that we have. Um, it's probably going to shift a little bit as it dries and I turn it upside down. Um, I don't really care for the silver areas that I added in that it's getting a little muddy and also um, it just kind of added it in in clumps instead of giving me these nice little runny trails. So I think I'm going to stop here and just let it set overnight and then once I know it's really nice and dry, um, I have been drying it with the air tool, but um, I want to make sure it is really nice and dry and then we're going to coat the inside with white so that these colors really show up. So I am going to leave this to sit in my paper cup and the reason I'm using the paper cup is in case anything drips out. Um, it doesn't look like it will, but just in case. Um, I might even just bend it a little bit so that it stays in there better. All right, and then just set it off to the side and, and let it dry for a bit. So I have let this dry for a few hours and what I am seeing here is I have solid shape of colors, but I don't see like the lines of dripping anymore. And I think on this side here, I had a lot of really nice lines going up and down this way and they have um, dispersed as well. So I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put the paint in and we will do a little bit of acrylic medium as well because I think this paint is gonna be way too thick. So let me start. I think I'm just gonna mix them in this cup that I had here. So let's put some of the white in 
like so. And then we'll add the medium into it. And I'm just guesstimating on the amount here. Let me grab a brush. And it still needs to be a little bit more liquidy to pour. So I'm going to add just a little bit more of my medium. That paint was very, very thick. Alright, okay, so I think we're starting to get towards a consistency that will work. And I am just going to now pour this into my ornament and hope that the alcohol ink is nice and dry. And we can see that that is starting to cover the inside, but we're going to need a considerable amount more. So let me mix up a bit more here. And we just want that paint to coat all the sides of our ornament. So we may just need to take a little bit of time here to work on getting that to spread around and hit every place. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a shake to see if that helps. Looking in, I'm close to having full coverage here. So you can see now how the colors are more vibrant. Um, you can also see that we did make a little bit of mud over here, but for the most part, it's quite interesting. Almost tree-like shapes here. There's that silver that we added, but I do like the blues and the greens and there's a darker blue here. I wish we have a little bit more of that purple show up. We have it on this side. So I think, if I look inside, I think we're pretty close to full coverage. We have some area on the side here that needs it. So I think that I am ready again to put this in upside down and let that paint pour out. You can see it has a little bit of a pink color to it, so some of my alcohol ink was not completely dry. And I do have, you can see I do have some, oh, I gotta get it in camera for you to see it. <laughs> okay, I do have some pink showing up here and I don't know if that's from the alcohol ink coverage or if it's from my white getting some pink tone to it but I am going to let that mixture pour out and dry completely and then we'll take pictures of the finished ornament.